Nobody knows if it's just a threat or if he will make good on it. And that is the real dilemma. How far can Putin be pushed? He's in trouble. So, I mean, that's why people are worried, because there is a degree of desperation on the Russian side. Among the Ukrainians, there is absolutely no willingness to negotiate with Putin. As things stand, it's going to end with Russian defeat. The nuclear threat is real and the concerns are real. Russia is using this as a way to put pressure on, on the West to reverse sanctions. I think that's the aim. I don't think that's going to happen. And analysts put the probability at anything from 10% risk that he would use nuclear weapons upwards. But Western capitals are taking this threat seriously. They can't afford not to. And Putin knows this. Putin's nuclear threat, and the one that he was most explicit about most recently, where he said, I'm not bluffing, was, I think, largely related to his previous nuclear threat, a basic deterrent threat, that is, not that he's promising to use these weapons, but he's setting his red lines, which would lead him to use them. I think probably right to assume that his red lines are those that were there from the start of the war, which is to warn the US and its allies against any direct intervention on Ukraine's behalf, also providing Ukraine with weaponry that it would allow them to make direct attacks on Russia. They've been respected by Biden and, and the other allies. As far as one can tell, there's an incentive on Putin to leave it as a threat, because as soon as he starts using these weapons, then the risk is that uh, the US doesn't feel as, as constrained as it does at the moment. The West has already sanctioned up Russia. I think the question is, is the reaction of the Chinese and the Indians and countries like that, would they take this more seriously than they've taken Russian actions up to now? I don't think the Russians do want to annoy, they're not allies, the Chinese and Indians, but they'd be more forbearing than other countries. So I think the problem for Putin is he is in a pretty desperate situation, as we saw the way he's been lashing out recently with, with not just uh, in Monday's attacks, but in plenty of other attacks as well on civilian areas and infrastructure and so on. There is a sense that these strikes in Kiev have moved the war into a new phase, that the Russians are reacting with anger. They see things like the strikes on the Kerch Bridge. They feel as though they're losing territory, they're losing soldiers. NATO countries are increasing their supplies of weapons to Ukraine, and again, Putin has not made good on this ultimate threat, but nobody knows at what point that might change. And nobody is taking that prospect lightly. It's what makes the situation so dangerous. I mean, I've never thought that nuclear use was likely, and even those most worried about it, don't put it in the highly likely class. Um, equally, I wouldn't say it's impossible because um, he's got nuclear weapons, he's in a pretty desperate situation, he's done um, pretty outlandish things already, so who's to say he won't do more outlandish things in the future? So you can't preclude it and you've got to pay attention to it. But there are a lot of very good reasons why any nuclear use would be a bad idea at the moment. Nuclear weapons come in all shapes and sizes. They can be delivered by a variety of means, from artillery, from aircraft, from missiles. There doesn't seem to be anything absolutely obvious that Russia could do. Sort of the first level of escalation, I guess, you have the idea of a demonstration shot. Then you have a variety of uses on the battlefield. And then you move on to the sort of next step, which would be an attack on a Ukrainian city which is a pretty substantial shift, and then to attack targets outside of Ukraine. But the difficulty um, they've got with each of these stages is, first, if you're using them in any numbers, this would be a big deal. If you're just using single shots, then you've got a problem that these weapons haven't been used ever. 
I think many people were very surprised indeed if he used intercontinental weapons or, or the big stuff. You know, that would mean Armageddon and a full war with NATO. It was August the 9th, 1945, that I saw the atom bomb dropped on Nagasaki. We're now well into the nuclear age. In the 50s, this had a sort of harsh reality to it. People thought that's what the next war would look like. The weapons were tested on a regular basis. All sorts of theories were developed as to how they might be used. It felt for real. And over time, we sort of settled into this situation of mutual deterrence, where it seemed very hard to imagine scenarios in which they would be used. And um, that led to questions about sort of the seriousness with which the whole exercise is taken. At a speed of 30,000 feet a minute, the enormous evil cloud surges seven miles into the Pacific sky, shrouding the destruction far below. What seems to be happening is there's jockeying for position in, in Moscow. Um, there's a blame game going on. And Putin, I think, has realized he's vulnerable, not to, to sort of moderate uh, opinion, because they're all either out of the country in jail or um, uh, executed, but uh, to the to nationalists, hardline nationalists, who are very unhappy that it's their best chance for uh, bringing back Ukraine into the fold has been blown. So every move at the moment, including mobilization, you've got to think of it not only in terms of Russia versus Ukraine, but the domestic politics now of Russia. The Ukrainians are not backing down. They feel as though the military successes of the past few weeks in the South and the East have given them momentum. And they want to continue that because when they sit down to negotiate, that's the territory that will be decided on. So they want to push their advantage. They're doing well at the moment. They don't see any reason why they should give in. They need more support from their allies. And one of the things they're worried about is this nuclear threat will put their allies off from sending more, from prolonging the war, that they might come under pressure from some of the Western countries to sit down with Putin and negotiate an end, however unsatisfactory that might be.